advice you might have for young people who are thinking about entering this business of uh, what we'll call mobility and and the future of transportation? Any you know, first off, I have to say that I think the future for design is incredible. The opportunities for someone in the field of design are limitless. Um, you know, there's some people that talk about, you know, um, autonomous vehicles just being pods. And yeah, they could be pods. Or they could just be the most creative vehicles that have ever been done. And if anything, I believe that the opportunities will be much greater than ever before. So I'm excited about that. I would also say that only go into car design if you're truly passionate about it. Don't do it because you think it's the new rock and roll and that it's cool and that, you know, you know, you, you, you know, it's the cool thing that it is. Yeah, it's cool, but you gotta be really dedicated and really understand design, understand art, understand the relationship between design and the technical side of it to be involved. Don't let anyone tell you no. Keep pushing. If you get rejected from a school, declined by a school, keep pushing. If that is what you want, don't let anyone tell you no. Good advice. Um, Looking forward in in this design field, you you know you'd say it's that you think the design the opportunities are great. What trajectories do you see for the near term, say the next 15, 20 years, mm-hmm. and then fifty years from now? Uh, yeah, any I, thoughts I, on that? When I think about the future of design or or of automobiles or transportation in general, uh, I first think about. Think about automobiles in the 30s. Harley Earl kept pushing to get cars lower, lower, lower. And, you know, the Y job was his great example. And the Sabre after the war, you know, and cars gradually, including station wagons, gradually got so low through the 1960s that a station wagon became very inefficient. It could carry plywood, but not don't stack too many of them because it was so low, wide and low, you know, because it was built off of sedan. Um, And we've gradually moved into SUVs and crossovers. When you look at a, a crossover vehicle, if you were to put them tail to tail with a late 1930s automobile, a sedan, they're essentially the same. The profile, of a crossover mm-hmm. and a late 1930s sedan is essentially the same. So it's not that, okay, yeah, and cars are dead and everything's SUV. Well, a crossover is basically a sedan, you know, and, and its profile is essentially the same. Seating position is very close. I think the challenge will be going forward as an aging population continues to be very mobile and very active, they don't want to climb up into an SUV. They can't, or climb down from an SUV. So they will want a vehicle that has got great utility, great functionality, but is easy for them to get into. And I think in some ways, it's the size and proportion of a 55 Chevrolet is probably right on a very modern car with that size, that interior space, that ability to get in and out of it easily, Uh, whether it's a 55 Chevrolet sedan or the wagon, not the Nomad, but the regular wagon, (laughs) you can't get more efficient, more spot on as a vehicle than the 55 Chevy wagon. When you really think about it. They're effortless to get in and out of, you're right. Exactly, and, and great utility and just the size and all that is, it's, so something, they won't look like a 55 Chevy at all, you know, and I don't think anyone should try to do anything that, that is an all, all inspired by it, except for its size and proportion, but a thoroughly contemporary or advanced design of that size. 